Greetings Earthlings, today we're going to be discussing the differences between 16 and 24 bit recording as well as which bit depth you should be recording at. So first things first, we need to have an understanding of what an audio interface or an analog to digital converter does. And all it's doing is taking an analog signal like me speaking into this microphone and creating a digital version of that. Now there are two really important specifications when we're talking about analog to digital conversion and those would be sample rate and bit depth. Sample rate is essentially telling you how many times per second your audio interface is taking a snapshot of the analog signal you're recording. So if you're recording at 48 kilohertz, that means that your audio interface or your analog to digital converter is taking 48,000 snapshots of your analog signal per second. An imperfect analogy here would be to think of sample rate as a frame rate on a camera. How many times per second is your camera going to capture an image? It's the exact same thing here, just with audio. But this video is not about sample rate, it's about bit depth, so let's get back to that. Bit depth, on the other hand, tells us what resolution our audio is being recorded at or how accurate the sound being captured actually is. Adding on top of the previous imperfect analogy, we could think of bit depth as the resolution of your camera. So what you're seeing in person with your eyes would be analogous to the analog signal you're recording. And then on your camera, you have the option to record at 1080p or 4K, 1080p having less detail, 4K having more detail and being more accurate of a representation. And therein lies the difference between lower bit recordings and higher bit recordings. Higher bit recordings are going to capture a lot more information about the sound you're recording and therefore create a much more accurate representation of that. But now let's go ahead and look at a visualization of a really extreme example so we can get an even better understanding of what bit depth is doing. So what your interface and analog to digital converter are doing is saying we have 16 possible values that this analog signal or waveform can be. Since we don't have infinite possible values, we can't perfectly digitally recreate this sine wave, so we're going to need to simplify this information. And you can think of this like averaging, rounding, or even sorting. For instance, this point right here is negative 4.2, and it's closest to negative 4. So let's go ahead and throw it in a pile with all the other negative 4s. This amplitude up here is closest to six, so let's throw it in a pile with all the other sixes. So during the analog to digital conversion, your interface is doing this simplification, and that simplification is called quantizing or quantization. Now, if you're still kind of confused about what quantization is, let's go ahead and use a really popular tool to demonstrate that even further. So now I've initialized an autotune effect in Logic Pro, and while the human voice is capable of creating an infinite number of pitches, the autotune software is saying this pitch right here, ah, uh, is closest to A. So let's go ahead and smash it down to A. This pitch right here, ah, uh, is closest to B. So let's go ahead and bump it up to B. So basically it's just taking whatever information you put into it and making it fit within a set number of parameters. So now that you have a basic understanding of bit depth, let's go a little bit further and talk about what bit depth actually means and how it directly relates to the sound quality you're getting. So first off, bit depth is just telling you how much information is being captured every time your interface or analog to digital converter takes a sample of the analog signal. And as I already mentioned, the higher the bit depth, the more information is being captured, therefore the more accurate the representation, the lower the bit depth, the less information and the less accurate the representation. Now let's hear how the decrease in information actually affects the sound as we decrease from 24 to 16 to 8 to 4 bits. So throughout this entire video I've been recording at 24 bit 48 kilohertz and this is how it's been sounding. Now I've decreased the bit depth to 16 bit and you may not hear a huge difference here and that's probably because of YouTube's compression, the volume of my voice and the limited frequency of the human voice. Now I've decreased the bit depth down to 8-bit, and as you can hear, it really starts to degrade the audio, you're starting to get digital artifacts, and it's also starting to introduce a lot of extra noise. And now I'm down to 4-bit, and as you can hear, it's just atrocious. I highly doubt you're able to understand anything that I'm saying at all. There's just such little information here, it's not even useful. Now, just for the hell of it, let's go ahead and dive further into the theory and look at some equations that tell us how much information is actually being captured. So the number of values that your analog signal can be quantized to is calculated by taking two to the nth power, where n is going to be the bit depth you're using to record at. 
So if we look at 16-bit, we take 2 to the 16th power, and that gives us 65,500 possible values that your analog signal can be quantized to. But once we jump up to 24-bit and take 2 to the 24th power, we get 16.7 million possible values that your analog signal can be quantized to. So to put this into perspective, you can just think of the accuracy of an image with 65,000 total pixels and then the accuracy of an image with 16.7 million pixels. The latter is going to be much more accurate. So when we look at these two equations, you can easily determine that the 24-bit audio is going to be a much more accurate representation of the analog signal. But there's even more equation fun, so let's keep going. Now, bit depth doesn't just tell us how much information is being captured and how accurate that information is. It also has a direct impact on a signal to noise ratio. So when your interface or A to D converter is quantizing the analog signal to its closest digital value, it's not just quantizing, but it's also adding in noise. And the noise that we're adding in is called signal to quantization noise. The equation you see on your screen is gonna provide us the signal to quantization noise ratio or dynamic range in decibels. So if we use the latter half of the equation, we get an approximation of this value. We're gonna multiply 6.02 by Q, Q being your recording bit depth, and when we throw 16-bit in here, we get a dynamic range, or SQNR, of 96 decibels. And for 24-bit audio, we're getting a dynamic range, or signal-to-quantization noise ratio, of 144 decibels. And just a quick side note here, these are just theoretical limits of the dynamic range. Chances are, in the real world, you're not going to be hitting these. So there you go, that's a basic overview of bit depth, but to sum up, what is the benefit of recording in 24-bit over 16-bit? First off, you're getting that improved signal-to-noise ratio as well as dynamic range, and that directly translates into the ability to record quieter sound sources without those sounds getting lost in the noise floor. And secondly, you're just getting a more accurate representation of the analog sound source that you're recording. But I guess I gotta throw in a downside here, and I guess in this case, it would just be that it's taking up more space on your computer. So now, do you need to record in 24-bit? Well, if you have a 24-bit audio interface, I see absolutely no reason why you shouldn't. Now, if you're uploading to YouTube or another website that compresses the heck out of your audio, you may not need to record in 24-bit, and you may not be getting a huge benefit. But I've always thought that if you have a higher quality product before it gets compressed, ultimately it's going to yield better results. Keep in mind that's based on zero research, so don't quote me on that. But I do gotta play the devil's advocate for recording in 16-bit. And that would be that I heard Fluff from Riffs, Beards, and Gear actually mention that he, as well as Joey Sturgis, still record in 16-bit 44.1. So honestly, just do what you want. Just make sure that the content you're making and the music you're making is great. And at least now you know the difference between 16-bit and 24-bit. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. I know I learned a lot when I was researching this stuff. Uh, so if you want more videos like this, go ahead and click the logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server. Link in the description, and I will see you all later. Bye.